Okay, so let's talk about earthquakes. First, let's clarify a few definitions. If this is the surface, we'll build a little city over here, a little town, maybe some houses, that kind of thing. If this is the surface of the, the crust, um, what we can see here is that the earthquakes usually occur underground. And uh, we have one plate here, another plate here, this looks like a uh, convergence where one is sliding under the other. Um, the location where the earthquake actually occurs underground is called the focus. And the area directly above it on the surface is the epicenter. So in this case, there's an epicenter very close to this town or city occurring. The shallower the earthquake, the more damage it can cause. So if it's not very far underground, like let's say 0 to 70 kilometers below the surface, it could cause quite a bit of damage deeper earthquakes that occur from 70 to 300 kilometers below ground actually cause less damage. All these earthquakes produce vibrations when the earth releases energy and these are called seismic waves. There's two different types of seismic waves. There's surface waves and body waves. The surface waves um, roll along the surface like ripples on a pond. There's a one type called the L waves which are surface waves and Basically, they just roll along the surface as is shown in this diagram. The body waves travel underground and there's two kinds we need to talk about. There's P waves, which are also called primary waves, and they travel at about six kilometers per second through the crust. They cause the ground to compress and stretch like a spring. Uh, you can take a look at table 12.3 to get a, a graphic that actually shows you this quite well. S waves are the other type of body waves and they travel at about 3.3 kilometers per second. They cause the ground to compress and stretch at right angles to the direction of the wave's motion. So the ground moves up and down. Uh, they cause a lot of structural damage, more than the P waves do, and they're also known as shear waves. Again, take a look at the images in your textbook in table 12.3. You can also see uh, in the graphic on your handout um, that the P waves actually travel all the way down through into the inner core, whereas the S waves are limited to the mantle and not the outer core, but they do uh, show up in the inner core. Right, this is the seismogram uh, taken of the 1906 San Francisco earthquake as recorded in Germany. So um, even that far away, you can pick up uh, vibrations in the earth. This was a really big earthquake. It caused a lot of damage and a lot of fires. In, so we call this a seismogram, and a seismogram is recorded by an instrument called a seismograph. Let's take a look at volcanoes. There are three types of volcanoes. Uh, first type is composite volcanoes. What we're looking at is British Columbia's own Mount Garibaldi here. Composite volcanoes are large cone-shaped volcanoes due to repeated eruptions. Because this is a glacial area, some of the top of Mount Garibaldi has been worn away due to weathering. And in fact, uh, most of the other volcanoes in this area in British Columbia, uh, their tops have been worn away by glaciers. Uh, these types of volca volcanoes tend to belch ash, rocks, and lava, and they're formed by thick magma. Uh, trapped gas builds up pressure in this thick gooey mess and when the gas is finally released it's very explosive so you get these very explosive volcanic eruptions and if you uh, have read anything about uh, Mount St. Helens you'll know that that was a very explosive uh, eruption and that it blew the top right off the mountain. These form near subduction zones which explains why we have them in our area. Another type of volcano is a shield volcano and if you've traveled to Hawaii you've seen shield volcanoes. These are the largest volcanoes. They form over the hot spots that we discussed earlier and they're formed by thinner magma. Uh, because it's thinner magma it traps less gas and so the eruptions are less ex explosive and as a result um, that causes this uh, gentle sloping sort of or shield like kind of um, structure of these volcanoes. Uh, what we're looking at in this diagram in the foreground is Kilauea which is uh, one of the most active volcanoes in the world right now and we've got the Pu'u vent erupting on the slope of Kilauea. This is actually the peak of Kilauea right here kind of behind this ridge. Behind it we see another active shield volcano called Mauna Loa and it's, uh, it's not smoldering. The smoke is actually coming from Kilauea from its peak. 
Uh, we do have some shield volcanoes in our area. Uh, in British Columbia, we have the Anaheim Belt, and it's located over a hot spot in BC. And if you're ever uh, sort of in north central BC, this is Bella Bella, uh, you could basically travel by these and have a look at them. A little bit more famous area of shield volca volcanic activity is Yellowstone National Park in the US and it's a chain of shield volcanoes. Some people say it's one big super shield volcano and um, basically in some places the hardened lava flows are as thick as two kilometers. Here's an example of a geyser in Yellowstone National Park and what's happening here is this would be sort of the surface of one of these shield volcanoes, very large shield volcano. And as water from springs and rivers flows into the Earth's crust and underground, it contacts this hot magma and it's fired back out again as a geyser. So this isn't actually a volcanic eruption, it's just water coming back to the surface. And some of these are pretty predictable. This is Old Faithful, which used to be a lot more predictable than it is, but it still erupts about every 91 minutes. Okay, the last type of volcano uh, it was really uh, not called a volcano, it's rift eruptions. And rift eruptions occur when magma erupts through long cracks in the lithosphere. So you can see magma coming up here um, through a fissure in the rocks curtain-like fountains of lava erupt and at these spreading ocean ridges but not always under the ocean sometimes also on land and these are not very explosive or violent they're actually quite common and an example of one of these under the ocean again would be the most famous one which would be the mid-atlantic ridge in the uh, in the atlantic ocean okay so that's an introduction to some plate phenomena, plate tectonic phenomena, some features of plate tectonics, and I uh, hope that helps.